All right, it is a it is officially twelve o'clock, so we'll, we'll go through some of the logistics and let some of our other uh, some of the guys that signed up they they'll kind of continue to trickle in, and we'll go through some of the beginning stuff to actually get to uh, why everybody came today. Um, so just go to this. Uh, obviously, you're here for the ISDX tips and tricks, or just information about ISDX and Creo 1.0. Um, if you've never used the ISD, or sorry, if, the, if you never used the GoToMeeting interface before, um, you have the ability to uh, minimize your interface, uh, which allows you to see a little bit more information. The little little orange button right here, if you collapse it, it actually, so you can see a little bit more real estate on your uh, on your screen. Also, if you're having trouble with mic or speakers. Uh, you have the ability to switch back and forth. It makes it a little bit easier for you one way or the other to do that. Um, also, even though there is a raise a raise hand, uh, and, and you can raise your hand, we actually won't take questions during the demo part of it. We actually wait to the end of the, the presentation to answer questions. So if you do have a question, please type it in your answers and question area, and then I'll leave 15 minutes at the end of the uh, at the end of the demo before the top of the hour where if you do have a question I will answer that question uh, question for you so um, just a little bit about the interface okay a um, little bit about me and about CDT uh, in, in general I am the uh, applications manager for CDT out of the Dallas area uh, CD if you've never dealt with CDT right you haven't been on our webcast before essentially CDT is a value-added reseller for PTC and the relationship that we have with PTC is one of, uh, you think it as PTC is Ford and we're the Ford dealership. Uh, we are exclusive PTC products, so as you can see up here, we, we do all of the Windchill Creo, Mathcad, Arbortex, and any of the PTC products that you, uh, uh, that you have. Uh, we have a very capable engineering staff that supports all of these. Obviously, I don't support all of these individually just because it would be impossible for that, but we do have a, a, fair, a big number of capable uh, engineers on staff to, to take care of all those needs. Um, so whether it's implementations or, as you see here, integration or migration or, or just Creo support or I should say CAD support in general, we could, we could help that. Uh, we, do supply, we do provide a level of tech support to our customers. Um, and everybody knows that PTC is your direct technical support um, and that's who your contract is with, but we do take technical support phone calls whenever we can, um, but what we stress is um, you know, we don't have as many many people waiting for phone calls as PTC does, so we will gladly help you out. But sometimes you got to wait uh, until we have the ability to, to help you out with that, that problem that you're having. We do also own uh, CDT owns the PTC certified training centers in the Kansas City, Dallas, and St. Louis area. Um, these are again, these are the certified training centers. We do have full time staff. In those I'm, I run the one out of the Dallas or the Arlington area, uh, and again, we have guys that are actually base in St. Louis and Kansas City. Um, so we, we've done always done a, a fairly good job with our training and promoted our training fairly well. And one thing that makes us fairly unique than some of the other training classes that you will find uh, out there is we will run classes for very low numbers, even down to just one person. Um, so sometimes you can't find classes. Uh, if you're not running five in other areas, we will run class for, for, for one student. It makes us kind of unique and it builds relationships and uh, uh, it helps you guys out more than it helps us out, so uh, that's kind of the way we, we look at it. If there is a, a training need that you do have, feel free to contact myself, and we'll, I'll put up my information at the end of the at the end of the webcast. Um, or you also can go to our website and go to the training portion, and you'll see it. You will also see our training schedule on the PTC website. Uh, the again, it does, won't say CDT specifically, but if you look in the Kansas City. Uh, St. Louis or Dallas areas, those will be our training schedules. Uh, another thing that we do provide that that's, uh, we, we pride ourselves on is that we will alter our training schedules to meet customer needs. So uh, if you don't see a class up there, please feel free to contact us and we will do our best to try to uh, schedule that class for you, especially if you don't have a class running that week or we, have, we don't have anybody in it. If we don't have one in that class that's currently there, we'll gladly replace it. Uh, if you'd like to send a few people, so uh, we're pretty flexible with that. We take a lot of tri a lot of pride in our training, and uh, and uh, we think we do a pretty good job at it. All right, um, CDT here recently. If you haven't seen this, was also acquired by Barry Waymiller. 
Uh, essentially, this is a, an exciting time for, for CDT. We've, uh, we've grown from one of the smaller VARs to now being one of the larger VARs, uh, if not the largest VAR in North America here. Um, Barry Waymiller has an umbrella. Uh, Barry Waymiller wanted to get into the uh, PLM and CAD sales game, and we provided a, a good avenue for that. They provide a, a large number of engineering services to a number of different companies. And so with the backing of Barry Waymiller and their engineering services and RFC world, it made a, a good marriage. Um, and we're, uh, we're excited to be a part of, of, of Barry Waymiller. So exciting times for, for CDT and Barry Waymiller, uh, an overall umbrella that we can provide a number of different needs for, for customers going forward. Okay, uh, before I kind of get into the agenda, and you know, since we're covering essentially just one tool, it's a pretty easy agenda. What we'll do is I'll have uh, Rosalinda put up three poll questions. Please, uh, please answer those poll questions. And as soon as we're done uh, with them, we'll get into uh, what is ISDX and what is new in ISDX and some comparisons and all kinds of other good stuff with it. So, Rosalinda, if you would, would you please put up the poll questions? <laughs> We have two more. Okay, it's all yours, Ben. Okay, uh, and then uh, real quick, quickly, and I know we usually don't do this, but by a show of hands, we'll, we'll and I'll ask this question, by a show of hands, uh, anybody out there that's using, that is actually doing surfacing work that's maybe 50%, 25%, or 100% of the actual work you do uh, every day, by a show of hands, is if anybody's doing that out there, just uh, go ahead and pop your hand up and, and let me know, just so I have an idea of kind of, what uh, demographic of group that we have. Anybody doing hardcore surfacing work 50%, 25% of the time, go ahead and give me a show of hands. All right, thank you. Okay. So um, what we're here for today is the ISDX tool, or the ISDX tool is abbreviation for what is interactive surface design. Now, for those of you out there that have seen uh, overly complicated shapes and you know your mouse with all the, the nice curvature in it and, and uh, even your cars and, and you know phones and all that other good stuff that goes along with it, for the most part, all that work was done more than likely, and it can be done in some other forms, but more than likely. Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. Different in more than one direction and in <clears throat> continuously changing direction when for the most part it's not possible with the other tools that you will see within ProE. And so what the ISDX tool is, and I'll get to this here in just a second. Okay, what the ISDX tool here is is an extension that you buy that adds in really one tool, but it's a lot of capabilities within one button that you get. Now there is the there's the two different paradigms that PTC promotes between what comes along with ProE and then what is added on with the freeform surface modeling or the ISDX tool. Okay. Now the idea with the parametric surface modeling is that like you see here, it's driven by dimensions, parameters, and mathematical issues. And, and yes, that's absolutely true. You have the ability to create curves in Sketcher and use those curves and dimension those curves and do different things like that, whether it's in Sketcher or whether it's just you know through points, and actually have hardcore dimensions. So if you wanted to change a value, you have the ability to change a value, and that's why it's considered to be parametric modeling. The extrude tool, the you know, the surface button in the extrude tool is a parametric surfacing tool. Uh, the 
the, the flat or the fill surface is a parametric idea. Now, what the extension does is give you capabilities that go beyond just the parametric, the parametric idea. That actually doesn't mean you can't do this kind of freeform push and pull on some of the things that you can do within the parametric within parametric surfacing. You know, you have it's it's kind of limited to curves that are through points, and I'll show you the ideas of that um, as I'll show you that a little bit later on, but. In freeform surface modeling, the idea is that I have the ability to do that and have so much more capability behind, hey, I want to just drag this surface out a little bit to get it around a certain feature. Or these surfaces are all blended together a little bit more complicated than what I can do within the parametric surface modeling tools. Now, in saying that, though, that doesn't mean, and, and we shouldn't take along the idea that freeform surface modeling can't be tied parametrically to other objects. Just like I can tie freeform surfacing curves uh, just to keep them out in space, I actually can attach them to, to other parametric curves, to sketcher curves or, sketcher or uh, just the uh, fill surfaces or, or something like that. And as those parametric objects change, my freeform surface modeling changes or curves and surfaces change also. So really what you have to do when you're considering whether you're purchasing a package like ISDX is that what makes my job more efficient? Now, again, there are some things you can't do from one to the next, and we'll kind of point those up. But what you find is in the freeform surfacing tool is that some of the capabilities are much smoother, much easier to deal with compared to trying to force some of those freeform ideas onto some of the parametric uh, curves and surfaces that you would see. And so if you haven't done this before, you haven't seen it before, I'll try to point out those ideas um, as, we, as we go along here today. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get into it. And so what we're doing here is we'll just hop into Creo Parametric 1.0. Um, I, I have downloaded 2.0, and we'll probably be doing a 2.0 uh, webcast here, here pretty soon. And for those of you that have not seen the 1.0 interface before, um, here is obviously the new interface, uh, a little bit different than what you've seen in past. I noticed a number of our users were on Wildfire 2 or before. Uh, so again, if you haven't seen the Creole parametric interface, you see the ribbon style interface. For those who are using Wildfire 5, the ribbon style interface from drawings is now across the board in all of the tools, and you'll even see it in the ISDX tool. And so what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and just say File New. We'll just leave it regular old part, pop in, and you see that you know, we have a new part. Now, a little bit of tidbit about the interface. Again, if you haven't seen some of our other webcasts, we kind of always start out with the, the differences in the, in the web, uh, the, the interface for Creo Parametric. Again, we now have this, or PTC now has this uh, the ribbon interface, and what really makes it unique is that I can right click up in the interface and do a customize the ribbon. And what I get is this interface that allows me to not only drag essentially areas around the engineering or the data areas around, but I also have the ability to turn off and turn on tabs just by kind of picking and clicking. And then on top of that, I also have the ability to create new tabs. So if I really wanted to, I essentially could deactivate all of my tabs that you see up here, create a new tab, call it the Ben tab if I wanted to. We are, and then from here, what I could do is drag any command sets that I want into this one, right? And so if I come over to the Ben tab, you see it. What I'm getting is the commands that I put in. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, my I have a little bit of cold, so it sounds like I've been punched in the nose. That's why. Okay. Um, so from here, right? The idea here is the, is the ability to customize your interface and. 100%. It, it makes it nice. So if I didn't use half the tools here or half the tools here, only a few tools and some of these other tabs, I could delete all of these and only make tools and functions that are relevant to the job that I do uh, available here. If you come in and you know I can right click on this guy and say, hey, I want to make it a small button instead of a large button. And I want to make this one a large button. So it makes it kind of nice to deal with. And again, if you haven't seen some of our other webcasts, if you look at all of the other webcasts, PTC is standardizing, standardizing across this for all of the tools. So whether it's Mechanica, or whether it's manufacturing, or sheet metal, or drawings, this is the interface you're going to get. 
and this is how you uh, how you deal with that interface. Gone also, there is no more config.win. Uh, they've eliminated the idea of config.win, and now what you have here is something called a .ui file. So if you see it, it's the .ui, and again, if you make changes, whether it's part mode or drawing or assembly, it all saves to the .ui file, and all you do is import and export a .ui file so you can give it to a number of different users in your, uh, uh, in your group or across the board for a company setting. Okay? So just a little bit about the interface, uh, just before we get into it here. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to dive right into what is considered to be the style tool. Now, for those of you that, that don't know, the, the style tool is ISDX. That's really uh, what you get out of this. Now, what happens is as soon as I hit the ISDX button, what you get is an entirely different interface than what you would see regularly uh, within just the Pro-E or the Creo parametric interface. Okay? All of these tools, and even though you pick one button, you're like, what am I buying for one button? This is what you get. Okay? You get a lot of other different things uh, once you pick into the button. And really, what this concept is, is what the, what the ISDX tool works off of is essentially, if for those that are, that are you know, all Pro-E, hardcore Pro-E guys, it works off an idea of an active plane, which you could kind of consider to be almost like a sketching plane. Okay? And then you have creation of curves the editing of the curves that you create, and here are some of your other curves that you have. Okay? You have the concept of surfaces, okay? so creating a surface, editing of a surface, and then some of the other surfacing tools, and then analysis. So here is kind of the meat and potatoes of the commands that you have that are come from the ISDX tool. Now, other parts interface-wise, which makes it kind of unique, is that once you get into your ISDX button, what you have is your current model tree, which has all of your parametric features, and then you have your style tree. Now, really what makes this unique is that because I'm creating multiple features, style feature or ISDX features within one tool or within one feature, one ISDX feature, is that when I create curves and surfaces, it doesn't matter when I create them, they're all real-time regenerating within my ISDX feature, and so I can create curves, put a surface on it, but then come back and edit that curve, and I will see the surface update real time as I'm dragging because, again, we're all within one feature and not multiple features within the model tree. Okay? So just some ideas of, as far as conceptually about how it works. And we'll get into some of what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead is I'm going to come in and create some curves just that you have. So we're just going to create some generic curves and some generic surfaces just so you have a feel of where we're going down. As I, as I kind of get to this, uh, I just wanted to create a wavy surface, again, within the ISDX tool. Uh, we're going to create a one arc and, or you know, just a spline, and you just put is I have the ability to set active planes. And again, active planes are active plane, but this time I actually want to create a plane that's kind of a little bit farther out. We'll kind of just drag it out. We'll put it out at 100. There it is. And so what I'll do is I'm going to say, uh, give me the active plane orientation. And we have a zero, and I'm going to come in and say, I want to create a curve. Now, these curves are all just spline based. So if you think of them on the spline, that's essentially what you're creating right here. You have a separation between 2D and 3D splines. They're called planar curves and then non-planar curves. Now also what you have in the drop down is arc and circle. And so I think in the wild one of the I forgot which wildfire it was. I think in Wildfire 3 they introduced the arc and the circle command within ISDX because not everybody just wants to create splines. You might want to create arcs, arc and circles. So what I'm going to do is say I want to create a curve, okay? regular old uh, dashboard that I get, and I have a create a free curve, which is a 3D curve, or I say I want to create a planar curve. So in this case, I'm going to say I want to create a planar curve, and what I'm going to do here is say I want to create a curve here, 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 and here. Now, once I do this and create this curve, pretty straightforward, here's the curve that I have, okay? At this point in time, if I wanted to change that curve, I can do that through curve edit. And the reason I'm going to get into this right now is that what you have here is, um, is the ability to edit this specific curve and drag this curve around, right? And what you see, and even though this is the concept of just being able to drag things and move things and push and fill and it's intuition, yes, that's true. But if you notice, if I go in to edit this curve, I do get real values that I actually control, and they're all based off of uh, they're all based off this plane 
and essentially values from certain planes. So in an X coordinate from this, it's negative X, it's at you know, 202, uh, in Z it's a specific different difference, uh, distance that I have right here. So again, even though ISDX has the idea of just push and pull and kind of move things around, I can actually set values to points that I want to change. So we'll go ahead and leave this curve alone, okay? And what I'll do is create one more curve on the other side. Now I could copy this, but we'll just do this a little bit different way. So I created another internal curve, okay? We'll put it on this side. There's my active plane. Let's create a curve. Let's get in our active plane orientation. And this time, what I'll do is I'll say, let's go ahead and put it somewhere about right there. Put this guy where we are, and put a curve something like that. Okay, we'll say okay. Again, we could get into the edit that if we wanted to. Okay, notice how what we're creating in the style, uh, in the style tree itself. See how we're creating a datum. We're creating a datum. We have a curve and we have a curve. But if you see it in the model tree, what you see is just one style feature. Now, from here, I want to go ahead and connect these object or connect these curves together to create surfaces. Okay. So what I can do is come in and say, I want to create a curve, but this time, instead of it being a planar curve, I'm going to say, I want a free curve. And what I'm going to do is hold the shift button, which allows me to snap the objects, and I'll say, I want to snap there, and I want to snap there. Now, I didn't get all the way at the end, that's okay. We can come back and easily change that. So I'm going to come in and say, edit the definition, or it's edit curve, same thing, it's in the same spot. And notice how I am snapped on to that curve at this point in time. So what I'm going to do is come down, drag all the way down, Okay, and I'm going to right click and say I want to lock that to the end point. So all I did was just right click once I got it down to the end and say I want to lock this guy to the end point. Okay, there it is. If you see this, and hopefully you guys can see this on the webcast, is that when I have an attached curve that's just free but attached to the curve, I have a, uh, a circle. When it's attached to the end point, it gives me a different indication that tells me I'm now absolutely at that end point. So if those of you that have done the boundary blend type before and you don't know if you're attached and sometimes you're attached and it's hard to see if you're attached, at least it gives you an indication that makes it a little bit easier and it's kind of a nice little feature that, that comes along with it. Now, what makes ISDX really different here is the different types, uh, the different types of surfaces that you can put in. So what we have here is for those of you that have ever created a boundary blend surface before, okay, I would have to have a closed in uh, a closed-in surface to create this, but in ISDX, I don't have to do that. It's really unique and flexible about the types of surfaces that you have the ability to put in. So what I'm going to do here says I want to create a surface, and what I'm going to say is I want to create a surface from here. Just hold the control button to there. Obviously, I can get a surface, pretty straightforward. And then what I'm going to do is say I want to add another internal curve, which is this, that influences that shape. And what you see here is I have this surface. So with just three open or three curves, they're connected here, but they're open on this end, I'm allowed to create that surface. You cannot do that within just the regular parametric tools within ProE. Okay? Now, what another thing that makes this really unique here is that I can at this point in time go in and create more curves and then come back and add those to those surfaces to influence this shape. So I'll come in and say I want to create a curve. I have a free curve and I want to create it from Let's go ahead and turn off our datum so we can see this. There we go. I'll say from here to here. There we are. I'm in and edit this curve. I'll say edit the curve. I'm going to right click and here are the edits that you have. So for those of you that ever put a curve through points and have ever used the curve through points and the tweak and the tangency ideas, this is kind of what this is. And I'll show you this here in just a second, okay? some of the, the tangency ideas. But what I'm going to say is I want to add a midpoint. Okay? There's my midpoint. And then from here, what I have, which really makes this unique, is that I have the ability to say, give me all of these views. Now, what this does, it shows me essentially a top view, a front view, a side view, and a 3D view. And from here, what it allows me to do is drag and push this curve in the view and only have it move within that view. So for instance, if I come in here and say, I want to drag this point up, watch all these other screens adjust, and I say, I just want to drag it up somewhere about right there. Notice how it's showing me drag all of those up in the different areas. Okay, If I drag on this screen, you'll see it drag back and forth right here. Notice how it's dragging back and forth. Notice how it's not moving in that one because all I'm doing is dragging back and forth, left and right. Now it drags more back and forth this way. Go ahead and 
I'm due out of that one. Okay. So the ability and see how you're dragging it in three different views and it only move within this plane. One of the bigger problems that you run into with creating curves through points in the regular parametric tools is that when I go to tweak and manually drag and push points, is that if I drag this point this way, there's nothing, unless you specifically tell ProE or Creo Parametric 2, to prevent it from diving away from you. And so you could drag this point way over here like this, but until you actually turn the model, you didn't know that, you, that it dropped 50 feet away from you and essentially the Z depth. And it, was, and it was always kind of a frustrating thing to deal with. Okay? So when you're doing it this way, you can at least see and know that it's not moving in those other planes within, uh, within the views that you have. Okay? Go ahead and turn the views off. There we are. And now what I'm going to do is just come in and say, all right, I want to edit the definition of this guy. Okay? We'll go ahead and say, I want to remove this chain. And now I want to add in this one and then also this guy. There it is. I didn't think I had to add it as an internal. We have to add it as an internal. Three change. Let's remove my change here, and say one, two, three, four. Oh, you know what? Let's make sure that it's let's make sure that it's attached on at the ends. I bet you I didn't get that attached on at the ends. Get the definition. There we are. Attached on. Attached on. Well, I want to update this this surface. It would be nice if I could update this surface. Let's try it one more time. Hopefully, we'll get it to work. So, two chains, one chain. Control button. Well, I should be able to do this, guys, pretty pretty simply. So, here's my chains. There's my two. There we are. Two, three. Update. Okay. I should be able to, and I I did this just the other day, I should be able to add on this other curve and again be able to influence this curve. It's kind of disappointing that I can't get that to work, but uh, add on and influence that curve just by adding in this object right here. Okay, and it, and it really doesn't make a difference that it's it's below. Uh, it should be able to allow me just to, to add this in. So anyway, the idea is to be able to do that, and yes, you should be able to do that. And for whatever reason, I just can't do that right now. That's a little bit disappointing, but there's the idea behind it. Okay, all right. So we'll keep moving on. Um, anyway, the adding of curves and the idea behind curves and manipulating the curves. Uh, one thing that you have here, if I come into my curve edit function, uh, if I go ahead and pick my curve, this is where editing of curves also becomes very unique. Let's say that I wanted this curve to be normal to this surface right here. What you have the ability to do is control end condition by picking on the ends and then right clicking on these drag handles. And this is what makes this really unique compared to just creating curves through points. And what I can say, I want it normal, and it says normal to one. I want it normal to that uh, uh, that surface right there or that that plane right there, and notice how now that it's normal. Also, notice how I have the ability to control the length of that of essentially the take angle for my normality. I guess you might want to call it for that specific surface. If I come on the other end, I right click on it and say, "Here's normal. Normal to what? Normal to that plane." And notice how I've now created this surface where at the ends, let's say we were mirroring. Uh, a surface about this plane, it would mirror just fine inside now that I'm normal. If anybody's using the older versions or Wildfire 5 and back, you know that's a little bit more of a complicated as far as button picks and clicks that you have just to get things tangent and normal. Okay, So just kind of some, some simple surface creation and some simple surface editing uh, that allows you to do some pretty, uh, pretty simple things. Okay? So just some ideas here. Uh, let me go ahead and finish this guy out, right? just the regular old uh, just a regular part that we have, and what I'll do is open up uh, this this part right here that I have. Now, I'm going to do some comparisons as far as curve creation, uh, some tangency <coughs> applications, and just some ideas that go along with it. And so, what I'll do here is that for those of you that are using Wildfire, um, I don't know, it, it's way even back before Wildfire uh, even was out, even the 2000 up until Wildfire 5. PTC never really changed the curve through points interface. Uh, it was a fairly clunky little interface that you had. There was a lot of drop downs of picks and clicks and next and done returns that you had to deal with. And in, while in, in Creo Parametra, they actually updated this, but I want to kind of show you the differences between a style or the ISDX curve editing and the just parametric curve or what comes along with ProE curve editing that you have. And so what I'm going to say is curve through points. Okay. 
Notice how we get the different interface, and I'm going to say I want to go from that point to that point. Now, for those of you that haven't had experience with this before, okay, this is essentially the new interface that you have for curve through points, or if you're using the older version, this is now the curve through points. And so what I'm going to do is just right click on this and say I want it to be tangent, and I want it to be tangent to that edge, and I want it to flip to come out this way. Okay. So nice and simply, they made it, you know, made it a little bit easier to deal with. I'll go ahead and right click on this guy, say tangent to this side, and I want to make it tangent to this edge, and then there it is. Now, great, okay, easy to deal with. You get this tangency, but you're pretty much stuck with the tangency lengths that you look that you have. And then also, notice how in my options I have this tweak curve, and if I go to tweak curve settings, what does it do? it goes back to the old interface that you've seen in a lot of the previous versions of the software. So at this point in time, I can come in and say, all right, I want to add a point in, I want to add this point in, and I'll come back here and pick this guy. And now at this point in time, I can move this. But what you have a problem with is notice how I was at this look, and all I wanted to do was kind of drag it out this way. But see how it drug it back? Okay? That's kind of the downfall to this interface and the way that you, you've done it in the past. The only way that you could really control whether you were or were not moving in certain planes is if you came down into the movement plane and say, I want to define this plane okay, as my movement plane. Let me go ahead and add in a point and make sure my movement plane, let's go back and make sure we pick our defined plane. And now when I drag this curve out, notice how it doesn't dive away from me like it did before. That's really the only way to control that. And so using not only ISDX, tools and some of the button clicks that I don't, that you guys can't really see, I can talk about a little bit, but also the four, uh, the four views that we have, it makes it a lot easier just to tweak and move and kind of define curves, okay? So what I get for tangency going in and going out into the curve, they, it is, is what it is, okay? I can't, I don't have the ability to kind of tweak this. I can add in points and kind of move it, but I don't have a real robust way to alter this. And so here are the differences between just the out of the box, come along with ProE curve datums, and then also now the style tool. Okay, so what I'm going to say here is curve. It's going to be a free curve, and what I'll do is say I want to attach it onto that endpoint and attach it onto that endpoint right there. Again, here is my uh, just straight line that I get. I'll come in and say edit definition, or it's just the edit of the curve. I'll pick on the point and say, I want it surface tangent. And so now that it's surface tangent, I can come over, pick here, pick on this guy, and say surface tangent. Now, notice how it's a little offbeat. Okay, what I can do is right click on it and say align, and I'm going to align it with that edge. I can come over to this guy, pick it, say align, and align it with that edge. Now, what makes it unique is that from here, what I have the ability to do is drag how much or how little tangency I have. On this one, I don't have that control. So come back, come back and forth. Let's say we want some really heavy tangents or some really long tangency, so it makes a pretty big difference in between uh, our, uh, our curves. Or I can drag it out, right? I drag it in, come back to this guy right here, drag this guy in, and notice how I can flatten it out, but still, I still have tangency, and it is aligned with this edge that I have right there. So quite a bit different. Also notice how if I get into my tangency, I have lengths of tangency that I have. So as I drag this out, I actually get a length of tangency that I can come in and drag back and forth. It's still staying aligned with the tangency. Okay, Come over here, pick this guy, drag it out, still aligned with the tangency that I have. Okay, So a lot of different shapes and ideas that you have. And again, as I come in and if I want to add that same bubble, all I have to do is right click say add a midpoint. If I want to, I can say put it in the 3D view, and now I want to drag it out a little bit, right? drag it out a little bit, and I can create that same type of bubble that I can get from that one. So quite a bit different as far as capabilities uh, within the, the curve creation idea and some of the flexibility that you have, have between it. To be honest with you, if I had a choice, I would always create curves within the ISDX tool because just because it's created in the ISDX tool doesn't mean you don't have the capabilities of using that within anything else in Pro. I mean, if you wanted to use this for uh, sweeps and blends, I mean, you can absolutely do that. If you wanted to use it to define 
uh, your boundary blend surfaces. You could absolutely do that also. So just because you create these curves in ISDX and use them in ISDX doesn't mean uh, they're stuck within them. You can use them within other features within Pro E. Okay. Now from here again, I'll say surface. There's that first one. That guy. There we are. Okay. Here's my surface that I created. We'll make sure that our ends are tangent. Okay. There's our ends that are tangent. And again, what I've created is this nice surface that I have. Okay. Now, nice big swooping, interesting surface, right? Just kind of some freeform shape. If I come back into this style tool, <coughs> we've talked a lot about <coughs> excuse me, editing of curves. I can do surface edits also. And then what really makes this cool here, okay, is I can come in and now uh, I want to edit this surface. And what I'm going to do is I want to show that, and let's say we want uh, Let's say we want 20 rows, and we want 20 rows of these. And what it does is create this grid now in the middle of this freeform-wise. What I can do is come in and say, I want to pick that point, hold the control button, pick this point, this point, there, 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 let's get all these points picked. And now, uh, oops, let's pick those points again. Sorry, guys. Pick, 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 point, point point. We don't want that guy. Point. Make sure you get your points picked correctly. And notice how I can drag all of those points up like that. And what I'm doing is actually real-time surface editing. So I it put in essentially kind of a thumb press on the backhand side of this. I can push it also down the other way pretty easily. Okay, Bring it up, bring it down. There it is. There's my surface edit. And now what I've done is added in a fairly complicated add-in to this surface fairly simply. If you try to model surfaces like that and the angles and, and trying to put that in, it's not that easy. Having all these rounds that exist, I just picked it, put on the surface edit, picked a few points and drug them out. Okay? You can't attach those points on to other entities with the shift button. And again, it's just nice surface editing capabilities within the tool that again, come along with it. And if all you're looking for is to kind of drag some things around and do some of that stuff, it makes it nice and pretty. Okay? Another thing that you have within the ISDX tool is that you have the reflection or essentially you have analysis functionality uh, uh, directly within, uh, within the tool itself. So again, as you are editing, okay, as you're editing, you can come in and turn on the analysis tools. Uh, all right, let's go back to surface edit. Let's turn on the analysis tool. There we are, and now as I drag, uh, drag this item around, okay, so I drag this item around, I can come in and you would see the, uh, the reflections and all of our other types of analysis tools update real time as I'm dragging it around. So again, kind of a cool little idea that you can come in and manipulate and do those things with, and it makes it easier to create some of these more complicated surfaces uh, that, that you would see. Okay? So there you go. Pretty easy stuff, simple things to do, uh, nothing overly complicated about specifically about that. Now, some of the other surfacing, uh, just creation ideas that you have, right? I can come in here, create a surface. I can pick that guy as essentially my, my major spine. Uh, pick this one right here. Notice how I can create a surface like that. You can't do things like this within Pro E. It's just, it's not. It's not possible. I created a surface. It's almost like a sweep, right? It looks like a sweep where I have a spine and I have a, a path that I want to follow and it sweeps that shape along. And again, I say okay. And if I want to, I can do surface edits and come in and do some pretty, uh, pretty crazy thing with with these also as I as, as I go through this. So just some ease of use ideas and how you're how you're doing that. And again, remember, these are just surfaces. So if I come out, I have this style surface. Um, let's, I don't know if that will work. Let me kind of back this up. Let's get rid of, we can try it. Let's, let's kind of go out on a limb here and see if this will work. Let's get rid of this one. Let's go ahead and delete this one. Let's go ahead and try to just, uh, just thicken this one. I don't know if this will work, but we'll try it. Uh, we'll say thicken. There it is. And so again, I've now turned this part into a solid. And again, if I flip from one side to the other, Again, I just get my solids that I that I have. Okay, so for the most part, okay, this is kind of the concept behind what ISDX give you. 
You use ISDX not as a standalone tool. Can you? Yes. But in most cases, it, you're using along with you're using it with conjunction with some of the other things you can do. You know, we connected this surface, or I connected this surface onto parametric models or parametric surfaces. So this was done with just an extrude. This guy was done with just an extrude. I'd merge everything together, give it a thickness, and all I have is one feature that's an ISDX feature that's attached to my other objects that are uh, there are parametric features, and so that's really what the style tool is about, is complementing and giving you ease of use as far as some of the more complicated type surfaces that you would ever have to create. Uh, one of the, Another kind of interesting thing here is that if I say curve, and I say curve on a surface, this is kind of unique, uh, say curve on a surface, I'll say I want to go ahead and put a curve here, 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 and all I'm going to do is pick. And what it does is create, okay, but notice how that curve is actually adjusting and adapting to that surface. So there's my curve that I have. So it's a curve on a surface. All I did was, was picking points. If I had specific points, I could have hit the shift button and attach it to specific points. But notice how it actually creates it along the, along the surface. So all I do is just picking points on the surface. And what it creates is this, what is called a curve on a surface. And it just creates it along the surface. So kind of a cool little feature that you can put in. And again, if you wanted to snap that on to specific points or ends or whatever it may be, you have the ability to do that. So some fairly unique tools that you see within the ISDX tool. Again, it's not just the, oh, I'm, it, it's all ergonomic type stuff. You can use it. You can use it parametrically to attach to and also a little bit parametrically with some of the values that you can put in and some of the snapping functions that you have within the tool. But for the most part, um, again, in the time frame that we have and, and some of those things without getting into some of the other, uh, other objects, this is the idea behind what is the ISDX tool and the add-on advanced surfacing tool within ProE or Creo Parametric. Okay. Um, I, been yakking here for uh, a good 35 minutes and uh, now I'm going to kind of open this up to any questions that might be out there. Uh, so what I'll do is just go ahead and say okay to this. I'll minimize and let me go ahead and put my um, my information here back out on the screen. Uh, here we are. And then at any point in time if you have uh, any questions at this point in time about some of the things that you have seen or uh, any questions in general, uh, please feel free to answer questions. If you don't have any questions or you'd like to go, if you're not really interested in staying on for any questions that, uh, that might be asked, go ahead and feel free to drop off. Uh, but hopefully this gave you an idea of what is at least an introduction to what is capable in the ISTX tool and what are some of the things and and the things that you can do and how it is used. So that's, that was the idea here, is functionality and also where you can apply this also. Um, so if there aren't any questions, right, or if there are questions, please feel free to ask them. Uh, if not, and you're not interested in sticking around, go ahead and feel free to drop off. Uh, if we don't have any questions here in the next five, 10 minutes, we'll go ahead and close the, uh, the webinar right there. So go ahead and ask questions and I'll wait from there. All right, we have one question from Mike. Ah, yes, uh, Mike, thank you very much. And, and I was kind of running into, uh, running into um, some time constraints, but you know what, why we're here, and I, since I have a few minutes and you specifically asked that, the answer is yes. And to be honest with you, Mike, I think you can do this now in Creo Parametric outside of ISCX. Um, if you're using Creole Parametric, and again, Mike, I don't know if you are or not, but let's go ahead and open this back up. What you have the ability to do here is, let's go ahead and pull this one guy up. Uh, there we are. What I'll do is say File New. It's just a regular part. And now, if you come into View and you come into Model Display and Images, what you can do is say, I want to add an image and I'll pick the plane that I want to add it on. And what I have here is a, a little bike helmet. And what I'm going to do 
is drag this into a specific spot. I can add it on to that that plane, and then what I have the ability to do is say from here to this kind of indicator mark to this indicator mark right about there, this value is 100. Okay, and so it gives me kind of an aspect ratio that I can deal with. I have the ability to set transparency and do those different types of objects with it, so I can see through it a little bit more. Okay. I can come in and say, all right, I want to add another object or another image. I want to add it here. I want to do a side. Okay? I'll say I want to rotate it 90. Let's go ahead and to move it. Let's go ahead and move it around. Let's go ahead and set this from here. There we are. To there. That's 100. Okay? And then from here, where's my move at? I want to be able to move it around. I wonder if I have to do my move before before I rotate. Let's move it before I rotate. Let's undo that. There it is. Let's put it back in. Add. Let's pick. There we are. Rotate. Or uh, let's see. Again. Okay, here we go. So let's rotate 90. There we are. We'll drag it down into a specific spot. All right, drag it down into a specific spot. From here, go ahead and fit it. Let's do our fit. I want to do my fit. There it is. Let's do our fit from here to there. Again, change my aspect ratio. And then again, what I have now, and I didn't put it in the right spot, but as long as we get it close to the right spot, what you would be able to do at that point in time is create curves directly from the images that you have that you have put in. Okay. So the idea behind it. Now I have those, and again, from here, you could go ahead and create curves from this outside shape to that outside shape. So hopefully that, that answers, Mike, your question uh, about that. But I think in Creole, I'm pretty sure in Creole Parametric, that's a default function. I don't think you can do that outside of Creole Parametric. It actually is only within the ISX tool anywhere from Wildfire 5 and back. Again, feel free to ask any other questions that you might have out there uh, as we go go through this. Uh, no. No, if another user does not have ISDX, Mike, no, they cannot edit. Now, when you say file, obviously it's just a Pro-E file, so they can make all the parametric changes they want. But they'll see the style feature, but they cannot change that style feature in any form. So, yes, they can open up the Pro-E file and do anything parametrically to it after the fact. Let's say you're just the ISDX surfacing guy and everybody else made solids. You could make the so you can make the ISDX features, uh, but they can just add the parametric features like a thicken or a shell or something like that based off of it so, um, or a solidify. So yes, they can edit the file itself, but not the ISDX tool. A little bit better example of the, um, and again, it's a little bit off scale for whatever reason, but maybe my images were off scale here a little bit also. So. Um, but here's a good idea of, of the application of the JPEGs. I can put a top view in again and drag some curves around it just to get a good shape in. I'll give you a few more minutes in case you are typing another question. We'll give you until uh, 12.55, and then we will go ahead and close the webcast for this CDT Thursday webcast. <coughs>
All right. Uh, Jim, if you're still listening, we're going to go ahead and uh, close out the webcast right now. Um, if you're, again, if you're still here, thanks for uh, hopping on, and uh, see you guys soon. Thanks, Ben.